Hi, I'm Katie Ziskind. I own Wisdom Within Counseling and Coaching. You can book your free phone consultation to get started in intimacy sessions at wisdomwithinct.com. This video is all about uh, females who may struggle with orgasming. So oftentimes there are a number of reasons, uh, kind of like an entire pie with all different slices that contribute to a female struggling with orgasming. One reason a female struggles with orgasming is that she feels she has to be the caretaker. Our society teaches women that they always have to be the person caring for others, that all of a female's needs should come last, that she should put herself on the back burner and in a sense, give to her children, her family, her profession, her career, her partner, her in-laws, her own parents, you know, everyone but her. And so we kind of have this a little bit of a martyr complex uh, that can get in the way of having a healthy sex life and experiencing orgasming because part of orgasming means you know reminding yourself that you deserve pleasure that you are important that you are valuable that you have a strong sense of worth and you deserve to feel good and so if you come into you know if a female has a mindset of i don't deserve pleasure i, I should be giving to other people you know, those limiting beliefs can come into the bedroom. So for instance, say a female is in a sexual activity about to receive pleasure, she may have a thought, I should be spending my time doing laundry right now. I should be meal prepping. I should be making a lasagna for dinner. I should be changing so-and-so's diaper. I should be working on this part for my boss, right? So there are all of these thoughts that a woman may experience while trying to feel good that can get in the way of um, her pleasure and orgasming. So that's one thing to work on is a mindset of, I deserve to feel pleasure. I know that those to-do list items will be there when I am done receiving pleasure and kind of carving out and structuring time for pleasure, just like you'd carve out and structure time for lunch or carve out time to do a Zoom meeting with your boss. Um, so prioritizing pleasure and having a schedule for it is gonna be really helpful in learning how to orgasm. Another important component in learning how to orgasm is having healthy nutrition. And you know, I use the term healthy very loosely. What I'm saying is intuitive eating, listening to what your body needs, listening to the signals of your body. So often in this society where women are told to do everything, you know, be the mom, be the breadwinner, be, you know, put everyone else first, um, there's this sense of disconnection to internal wisdom, um, which is, do I need breakfast? Do I need water? Do I need a break from work? You know, versus society's telling me to work as hard as I possibly can, um, and I have to listen to that, you know, so being able to have good nutrition, going grocery shopping, having leafy green vegetables, having good proteins, you know, if you can having organic fruits and vegetables, having, you know, good nutrition, getting a lot of most of your nutrients from food versus from supplements, um, reducing alcohol use and maybe even eliminating alcohol use, um, can help. Uh, reducing caffeine or eliminating caffeine. Um, a lot of times women who feel overwhelmed at work may skip breakfast, take medications with coffee, you know, take more and more medications and different medications to try to treat symptoms when really we're looking at a holistic perspective and living a holistic life when it comes to orgasming and sexual pleasure. So, you know, taking too many medications can also have side effects of low desire and low libido. SSRIs, antidepressants, um, antihistamines, um, certain even, you know, diabetic medications, all of these things can have an impact on your sexual health. So doing as much as you can lifestyle wise to live in balance and create, um, you know, an awareness of your intuitive wisdom can help you perhaps even live free from certain medications or reduce the doses of those medications. Um, so having whole foods, building a relationship with food, cooking, you know, making, you know, uh, your kitchen a place that you enjoy being in, you know, and making foods that you like, you know, getting to know a new recipe. 
that can have a huge impact on orgasming and having good hydration throughout the day, drinking, you know, an adequate amount of water, you know, will be really, really positive. You know, if you're just living off of sugar, caffeine, soda, donuts, you know, these things do not have the nutrients or the building blocks you need to actually create, you know, healthy sex hormones. Um, so that's really important. And then the next thing is to know that body confidence is a huge part of orgasming. So if you struggle with eating disorder behavior, um, you feel like you have to change your body shape or the weight that you are at in order to orgasm or feel like, you know, dissatisfied with how you look in any way, um, those beliefs can get in the way of receiving pleasure and orgasming. So repeating positive, loving statements to yourself can be very helpful in experiencing an orgasm. Another component to orgasming is understanding the female anatomy and pleasure system. So knowing where on the body to touch is going to be really helpful in understanding how orgasms physically happen. So first of all, females need about 45 to 90 minutes of foreplay. Um, this is all, also in self-pleasure as well as with a partner. Um, foreplay is what allows a female's mind to shift from that to-do list and kind of go, go, go attitude into I can receive, this is time for me, um, I am a sexual being, I can be seen um, as a sexual being, I can express my sexual orientation, I can, you know, engage in sexual fantasies. Um, there's a sense of mystery and suspense and playfulness and desire in this other mindset. So uh, foreplay allows that shift to take place. And in the process of foreplay, desire will build and we know that increased desire leads to um, really beautiful orgasms. So understanding that foreplay is really important and giving time, making sure that you don't feel rushed. You know, if you only have 10 minutes, it's going to be really difficult to mentally get over that hump to orgasm because part of orgasming means, you know, having as much time as you need to experience pleasure. And then that's just when the orgasm comes to you versus trying to chase the orgasm. Um, also, uh, we want to talk about female anatomy. So playing with erogenous zones, um, breast and nipple stimulation, um, massaging all different areas of the body, the belly, the inner thighs, the buttocks, the low back, the, you know, neck, the ears, the scalp, this whole area of the body, you know, this entire, you know, foot massages, rubbing the arches of your feet, you know, self-pleasure with a partner. These areas, these may be very, very important for you to kind of experience orgasm because after we touch these areas, then we are going to be uh, naturally creating some clitoral engorgement. So the clitoris is an area of the female pleasure system that is often needed to be stimulated in order to experience orgasm. So some females can have multiple different types of orgasms, right? From anal play to vaginal play to clitoral play to nipple play, all these different types of orgasms. Um, but um, most women will need clitoral stimulation of some kind um, to experience orgasm. So knowing that your body has a special kind of pleasure area that you can play around with. Um, and, you know, if you've never really looked at your vagina, like sitting in front of a mirror with your legs spread, excuse me, and looking at your genitalia is a really great first step in building body confidence. So knowing how your sex organs work will be really, really important in understanding how to achieve orgasm and how to experience pleasure. So playing with, you know, touching your nipples, touching your clitoris, maybe over clothing, Maybe there's different types of pressure or different types of stroking or, you know, there might be pressure that's too rough and you need to kind of lighten up or there might be pressure that's too sensitive and it feels like tickling and you need a little more pressure, right? So um, being able to explore your body and um, a mirror exercise can actually be a really great tool if you're learning how to orgasm. Um, and also as you're learning how to orgasm, knowing that... Um, porn or erotic material can be really helpful. So if you've never orgasmed before, watching a female pleasure herself in a pornography video can actually, um, though it's not education, can provide you with a level of 
um, increased desire. Some studies show that women who observe other women pleasuring themselves um, feel more comfortable pleasuring themselves. So watching a woman um, kind of touch herself can make you feel more confident touching yourself. So you can play around with that idea and know that it's very normal to touch yourself. If you've grown up in an environment where sex was taboo or you grew up in a really religious home or you were told that masturbation was evil or um, that you, be- you, know, you have learned the belief that masturbation is cheating on your partner or masturbation is a sign that you're unhappy or whatever the meaning is around masturbation being negative, you know, self-pleasure can lead to a more satisfying sex life. You get to know your body, you gain self-awareness, you can tell your partner what you like more easily from knowing what you like with yourself. So um, self-pleasure is going to be really helpful in learning how to masturbate. I mean, learning how to orgasm. (laughs) Um, And just knowing that you can seek the help of a professional if you do need it. You know, the team at Wisdom Within Counseling and Coaching would love to help you learn how to orgasm, have different types of orgasms, um, explore your body, um, build a passionate and positive sex life, you know, understand what clitoral stimulation means, um, support your partner in understanding your feminine anatomy, um, and really overall, um, communicate the type of touch you're needing and talk about sexual fantasies and things that turn you on in a safe, healthy way. So if you're looking for a private one-on-one setting, we would love to meet with you, um, whether that's myself or another um, counselor or coach on our team, um, we'd love to help you understand how to orgasm and really experience this beautiful part of life. So you can book your free phone consultation at wisdomwithinct.com. That's wisdomwithinct.com. I'm Katie Ziskin, and I hope you had a great time watching this informational video all about orgasming and female pleasure.